Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Officials circulating on social media. Some of the documents include a letter purportedly issued by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs and Internal Security addressed to the Secretary to the Cabinet. In the letter, the Secretary to the Cabinet is asked to petition the Vatican through the diplomatic representatives of the Pope in Zambia over a named clergy who is alleged to be working with foreign entities to destabilize the government. Another letter circulating on social media is purported to have been written by the President of the Republic of Zambia, His Excellency Mr. Akainde Hichilema, to the Director General Zambia Security Intelligence Service, in which it is alleged that the President had given several directives regarding the Roman Catholic Church. Let me firmly state that at no time has the head of state or indeed my permanent secretary written to petition the Vatican or to probe the Roman Catholic Church. It is equally saddening to notice a trend by some individuals and media houses who are quick and excited to jump on these unauthenticated documents and publish them as news reports. Such levels of anarchy and, and lawlessness will not be tolerated in the name of freedom of expression that has been granted to the citizens of Zambia. The people behind these acts ought to know that freedoms have limits and should not result in recklessness and alarming the nation. It must be stated that these documents are seditious in nature. And the consequences of sedition in this country are severe. We are aware that elements are bent on wanting to wage a rift between the government and some churches in the country. The new Dawn administration enjoys very good relationship with faith-based organizations, including the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church, in particular, has been cooperating with the government in many sectors, such as education and health, amongst others. I also want to inform the nation through you, my colleagues in the media, that the cabinet of the New Dawn administration is comprising not less than a third of the membership being Catholic. It just shows you that the government has a very strong relationship with the cabinet, with the Catholic Church. I, for example, am a Catholic. And a number of cabinet colleagues, as I've indicated, more than 15 of the cabinet members are Catholic. It shows the bond and the relationship between this government and the Catholic Church. It is also important to note that the Catholic Church has always been has always been in the forefront to ensure that government provides for the people of the country. 
We appreciate as the New Dawn government what the Catholics have done for this country. And no one, I repeat, and no one, whether Catholic or not, will be able to draw a wage between the Catholic Church and this government. The Catholic Church and ourselves are here to save the people of Zambia. The Catholic Church in this country is not our, an opponent of the New Dawn administration. Recently, the President of the Republic of Zambia had a very fruitful meeting with the Catholic bishops at State House, wherein a number of issues were discussed. It therefore follows that because of the good relationship that is existing between the Catholic Church and government, certain individuals who are known and certain members of the clergy have found it in their interest to wage a rift between government and the Catholic Church. That should not be accepted by the people of Zambia. The people of Zambia, in all the localities of this country, know what the Catholic Church has done. And they know the relationship between government and the church. I want to mention, as I indicated earlier, that these publications, which have been circulated, are seditious in nature. And let it be known that sedition is a very serious offense in this country. For those who are perpetrating these activities, don't blame anyone when you are caught and found wanting by the law enforcement institutions of this country. Let it also be known that under the Cyber Securities Act, anyone, not just the, the one who has authored, anyone who utters and circulates such seditious articles commits an offense. Let members of the public desist from doing such acts. For the long, the long arm of the law will catch up with them. I also want to appeal on behalf of the government of the Republic of Zambia to the Zambian populace at large that please let's desist forthwith from making any comments or publishing any statements that encourages or abating the rift between the church and government. It is not in the interest of anyone in this country to wage a war against government using the church. We know the intentions of the individuals who are doing this. We know the intentions. We are aware of what they have been trying to do for quite some time now. But let it be known that the secret wings of government are working round the clock to ensure that the culprits are brought to book. It's not a threat to anyone, as others always think. But if you are committing an offense, 
be assured that at one time or the other you will be held accountable. Right now we are calling upon, on behalf of government, we are calling upon law enforcement institutions to carry out thorough investigations pertaining to this issue. This wage which is being carried out, if not contained, can bring serious acrimony in the country. We call upon every right-thinking Zambian to support the core of government to ensure that we continue with its peace and stability and create harmony between the church and the government of the Republic of Zambia. I also want to appeal to those who are being cited to reflect on their conduct. They should think about not just themselves, they must think about the country Zambia, the country that has always been a beacon of peace, a country that has not been divided on the religious grounds. That is the Zambia which all of us yearn to live in. We have also noted with concern the individuals, there are videos circulating where they are indicating that those who have been arrested and charged are arrested based on their ethnic city. Don't cry foul and bring in issues of ethnicity after you have committed an offense and the long arm of the law catches up with you. It's not correct. Go and defend yourself in the courts of law. We are aware of individuals who were touting the law enforcement agencies and even telling the nation that they had the evidence pertaining to the issues they were raising. But now, they are crying foul. They are alleging ethnicity. Was there any ethnicity in the issues they were raising? The answer is no. So let's not do that. Members of the press, our dear colleagues, would like to appeal to you that as you carry out your noble duties, please take caution that some of the information that is being peddled on social media is false. Verify before you publish. Colleagues, I would like to thank you most sincerely for coming to once again listen to us pertaining to this very important issue which we are bringing to your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for that document address. Colleagues, you are free now to engage the Honorable Minister of Home Affairs and Internal Security with matters pertaining to what he has raised in his address for clarity or other questions. You will introduce yourself and engage the Minister. So the Minister is available for the interaction. Yes, please. Yes, Mr. Mangai. Um, Mangai, I write for Zambia Telecom. Honorable, I seek your guidance and clarification on the matter which I have raised. Not long time ago, there were some leakages regarding private conversation from government officials. 
that day, there was no serious action it was taken before that day, before people that bring such acts to that action by law. For example, the, there was a leakage on the private discussion between the president and his, his ministers and the other translators. Up to now, we are still wondering whether that was took place or not. Now we have these letters which shows that something is serious wrong. My question to you is, is it that we do not have relevant laws to punish such acts or maybe it's implementation? I see your guidance from this one. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes. My name is Darius uh, John I'm from Diamond TV. Um, right up to this question, not long ago again, uh, we saw some police officers at the Commission General's um, office after an, an alleged leaked um, audit letter to the Anti Corruption Commission. We've not gotten any update uh, from the Minister of the People that may be underway investigations as regards to that leaked document. Good afternoon, Mike. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mine is just to get a uh, comment with regards to concerns uh, from some stakeholders over the continuous, uh, continued detention of um, uh, the former presidential advisor, uh, Dr. Zimba. So maybe just to have your thoughts, what has prolonged his detention and that the police haven't yet decided to take that decision before? Yeah. Also on the issue of police vehicles, Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Mangala, I just want to inform you that uh, the laws of this country are adequate to deter and punish anyone found wanting like in the situation that is currently obtaining. The laws are there. I also want to inform you that investigations are, go are ongoing pertaining to the leakage of the conversation between the president and uh, the Northwestern Province Minister. As the president has always guided, will not want to arrest anyone or punish anyone without further, or rather thorough investigations. So we are still investigating. At an appropriate time, you will be informed. The investigations are quite active. I also want to inform my colleague from Diamond TV that those cases are still active, my brother. Uh, in the next you know, briefing, which will be soon, we'll be able to brief the nation pertaining to the issues at hand. Uh, I would like to inform you, my brother, that um, the procurement of police vehicles has reached an advanced stage. I was assured that uh, in the next four weeks, the vehicles will start arriving in the country. I know that uh, members of the public are concerned that uh, the police do not respond in time as a result of uh, not having adequate transportation. The other one, the, yes. Um, I, I was out of uh, the country. I just came back uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday. And yesterday I was uh, attending the commissar briefing. Uh, I'll be able to give a statement through the police. I'll have a chat with them so that they can give the nation an informed you know, situation pertaining to the same. I've also read the, uh, the concerns of members of the public. I'm aware that uh, we did assure the nation that whenever somebody is detained, within 48 hours, that person must be brought before the courts of law. So we'll be able to inform the nation pertaining to that matter. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Sir, the, from the lady behind there. Yes, good afternoon. Yes. Yes, it's just a ride on what you have presented in government when you were talking about traditional registration cards. Yes. I just wanted to find out if there is a strategy already in place that the government has put to ensure that uh, there is enhancement of the quality of the analysis that we have in order to avoid education and uh, forging of the analysis. 
Thank you, my brother. I just want to assure you that um, that particular issue is receiving active consideration at an appropriate time. Very soon, we will brief the nation pertaining to the new enhanced national registration card which we want to issue. I will not be in a position to give you a, a, a comprehensive response right now, but definitely that we are going to do. We will be addressing the nation over that. Once again, I just want to I thank you most sincerely, colleagues. You are partners in development. We are not opponents. If there are issues, even without a press briefing, please get in touch with me. We'll be able to address the, the issues of your concern. Thank you so much. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.